Hello and welcome to Easy Stall. My name is Kevin. I'm the creator and developer, and I'll be your guide throughout these series of video demonstrations. Now, these videos are going to be really, really boring, but they're going to be very important for you to take the time and watch them to get a better understanding of what all the tools that exist here inside Easy Stone. We'll have other practical videos that show you how to take advantage of these tools and actually create your rhinestone designs, but just understanding some of the basic features here before you get into the actual design process will be a huge benefit for you. So I know they're going to be incredibly boring, but bear with me, take the time, watch these videos, because you'll understand all the various options that exist that may not be readily apparent. So with that said, why don't we take a look at all the basic tools here on the stone tab and the various options that exist here on the stone tab here inside Easy Stone. So first things first, let's go ahead and draw a basic uh, rectangle. And in its most very basic level, of course, we can choose a stone color from the currently loaded library, and we can define a stone size. Now you notice we have a size and a spacing field here, which we can specify the spacing as well. When we enter these values, of course, we enter them in millimeters. We could switch over to inches by clicking on this little checkbox, but I typically will work in millimeters. Now, this right here, the SS size function, this is really not that important because this uh, information is only used for reporting. And we're going to get into that when we look at uh, finishing our rhinestone design and creating a report on it. But uh, just know that um, when we're designing, we really don't have to switch back and forth to the different stone sizes that we're working with. Now, this particular library, this is just kind of a sample library that I'm working with. This particular library uh, does not have uh, any other stones in it besides 6SS and 10SS stones. So that's why there's only two options there. Um, but And that's typically the only two sizes of rhinestones that I typically will use in a design. Sometimes I'll use a, a spattering of 16s or something, but uh, for the most part, it's 10SS and 6SS. But your library will have more options for you in terms of sizes, and you can delete and add sizes at will as well. So without getting into that, let's just go with our 10SS size to begin with, and let's just pick a color here. It doesn't really matter what color we pick. And let's go ahead and add stones. So this is the most fundamental function. So let's go ahead and add stones which we just did. Now let's take a look at what it did for us because it's, it's important to understand how these stones are added to our, to our uh, object here. So when we created a rectangle, you'll notice that when we create a rectangle, if we look over here in the object manager, it just says rectangle. But when we click add stones, notice what happens. Now our rectangle became an object called defined path and there are new stones applied to it and it tells us the library that those stones came from, it tells us the color of the stone, and it tells us the size, which in this case is a, a 10 SS size. Okay, And I'll explain more about why that may be important um, later on when we look at the reporting of the rhinestone design that we're working on. Now taking a little bit closer look at the rectangle, there's one issue here, and that is the corner. See that corner is not as sharp as these two corners, and that's very, very common. So to combat that, we're going to go ahead and select uh, our stones on that line and go ahead and clear stones. Now you can see once our stones are cleared that the object itself is still named defined path. And, and that's actually a very important feature that we'll talk about here in a moment. But um, to fix these corners, we have a function here in the stone tab called detect corners. Now that function will stay on until we turn it off. And we'll go ahead and choose add stones again. And now you can see we get a very different result. But if you look in your object manager, you can see we have we now have four defined paths instead of one, and we have four blends with the appropriate information. So what, what Easy Stone does is actually breaks our rectangle apart into four subsections and then applies the stones to those lines. And in doing that, you get perfect, perfect corners. So that's a, a real plus for us. Now I'm gonna go ahead and back up. So we just get back to our original uh, rectangle here. Now there are uh, some other options that we have. We could turn off the detect corners. And what I did is because I sometimes 
I don't really know why. Sometimes I just don't like to have that feature on. So what I did is I built in a function where if we hold down the Alt key and click on Add Stones, now you can see what happens. We still get the nice sharp corners because the Alt key essentially does the exact same function that Detect Corners does but it does it on a case by case basis. So we're not always detecting corners. There may be a rare occasion where you don't want to detect a corner. And I have just kind of trained myself to use the Alt key when I know I want to specify um, detect corners. Now remember I said at the beginning that this is going to be really, really boring stuff. And I think I've lived up to my promise so far. But it is important that we understand all these little nuances because it's these little nuances that make this program work for you. So talking about detecting corners we wanted i wanted the ability to just tell corel draw and easy stone what i consider to be a sharp corner so over here on the editing tab we have a kind of a companion function called break at nodes and we'll uh, discuss that later when we get into the editing tab but it's important to know that these two values is what the detect corners and the alt function has when we click on add stones to detect corners it's these two functions that tell CorelDRAW what we consider to be a sharp corner and so what we're saying here is anything between 25 degrees and so any angle that's greater than 25 degrees and less than 165 degrees that's what we consider a sharp corner and again it's just me being being very very technical wanting that uh, ability to really specify what's the sharp corner and what's not. So in this case of the rectangle, of course, we know that this corner is a 90 degree corner. It falls within those two angles and therefore we get a sharp corner. So um, just understand that that has a relationship there uh, that we can modify if we ever needed to. And on a rare occasion, you might, you might need to either increase or lower that angle uh, to get the exact effect that you want. All right, so there is another function here on the stone tab called drop stone, which is right next to add stones. And what drop stone does is it simply drops a stone. It's that simple. It drops a dead center of the page, one little single stone. And believe it or not, that's a function you use quite a bit. Um, but what we can do here is I can duplicate this stone. So uh, all I do is click on the stone, drag with my mouse, you know, so I'm left clicking and dragging and then right click. And you can see what I have now is I have two stones, okay? Now, when you have two stones selected, if I hold down my shift key and click on add stones, we have yet another function. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's hold down your shift key, click on add stones, and look at what happens. To me, this is an amazing function I wish every rhinestone program had because I use it so much. But basically, we had two stones that are separated by a certain distance, and Easy Stone has gone and determined how many stones would fit in between those two stones. Now, let me just undo that again. See, I can go at an angle. I can do whatever I want to if I have two stones selected. Shift add stones. Easy stone is going to calculate even on an angle like that. It's going to calculate the number of stones that will fit based on the stone size and the spacing we have specified. Now the other thing that it does, and that this is the most powerful thing I think here in Easy Stone, because there's only two rhinestone programs that I know of that even have this function. And that is when we're adding stones, especially uh, outline stones like we're doing here. It's doing so always connected to a path. And you say, well, why would that be significant? Well, what we can do is we can edit that path. See, that path right there is a curve object, what in CorelDRAW, what they call a curve object. So I can click on that path and drag. And as I do, those stones move with it. And that's actually a pretty amazing thing. And I have these control handles where I can control that curvature of that line in a multitude of ways. Now what happens is, is just by uh, mathematics, is when we modify this curve and when we bend it, you can see as we, as we make this curve, you notice that the spacing between the stones becomes greater. Now there's a couple of options to deal with that. One option would be to simply select the existing stones and click the Add Stones button again 
and Easy Stone will simply recalculate for the new length. Okay. The other option to that, if we really want to define the exact spacing between these stones, see the steps function down here? We can increase the number of steps or we can decrease the number of steps. And that will actually be quite useful as well when we get into actually uh, doing a nice rhinestone design, we can increase or decrease those steps. Now, you really want to see something interesting? We can even go so far as to define an exact number of steps. So in this case, I said, well, you know what? I want six stones plotted along that line. And when I click on add stones, you get one, two, three, four, five, six stones. You're always going to get one at the beginning and the end, but then it fills in the middle. This space is even all the way through. Okay. So some nice features there. Let's go ahead and delete that. Let's use that drop stone function again drops the stone in the middle of the page, and let's go ahead and copy that over again like we did previously. So back to having two stones here. One point I wanted to make is this steps option also works when you have two stones selected. So when I'm telling it I want six stones and I hold my shift key, add stones. Now you can see we get the beginning and ending stone and we get four stones in between because I asked for six exact stones. So very very useful feature uh, very powerful feature and just like I said before we can click on that line using our shape tool here in Corel draw and be able to modify and bend that line and you'll see me use that a lot in my uh, video demonstrations when we actually get into doing some rhinestone design now a couple of features here with clear stones if we have stones ap applied to a line we can simply hit clear stones and that will clear out the stones uh, we could also, let me make a duplicate of this, let me break the stones from this line. So right now these stones are attached to this path. If I choose break stones, now those stones are loose individual stones. Okay. So imagine I was doing a rhinestone design where I needed to eliminate the loose individual stones without eliminating stones that were plotted to a path. But maybe it was difficult to come in here maybe these stones were like this and it was difficult to just pick up the clear ones what i could do is i could make a selection of everything and if i hit clear stones watch what happens when i hit clear stones right now notice that only the stones that were applied to the path were deleted not this not the ones that were loose so let me undo that so now these stones right here are applied to this path you can see that um, if I were to come in here and move, you can see, see those stones are applied to the path. So if I make my selection and hold my shift key down and click on clear stones, now you can see all the loose stones were deleted, but not the stones that were on the path. So you can be able to differentiate between what stones you actually want to get rid of. You want to get rid of the loose stones, you hold your shift key and hit clear. Or if you want to get the stones that are applied to a path, then you can hit clear that way as well. Now, about these stones that are applied to this path, I should point out too um, that we can change the size of these stones. So let's just say I want to do something crazy like 8 millimeters, right? If I were to go ahead and choose a different color even, let me choose... Uh, let me choose emerald green, for example. If I select those stones along that path, even though I already have stones applied, if I hit add stones again, it's just going to apply the new stone. Or maybe I'm not changing the size. Maybe all I'm doing is trying a different color. When I click add stones again, you can see it just applies the new color. And likewise, I could leave the color and change the size, and it would do that as well. Okay? So that... Uh, is very very nice and so um, what happens is, is let's say for example I have a design all right let's uh, tell you what let's let's actually draw out a circle this time and just give you this example so I'm gonna go ahead and click add stones I'm gonna duplicate this design okay now what I want to do is I want to make this design much larger so I'm just gonna stretch it out and maybe I'll even squish it Okay, so now you can really get a get an effect. So I've taken my initial design, I, I've modified it quite considerably. All I need to do is click Add Stones again, and let me undo that. 
let me just select that and choose add stones again and now you can see those stones have been applied to my new shape and that so what that means is I can take any design where the stones are already plotted to a path and I can resize the design and then I can just come in here and choose add stones again and it'll recalculate the number of stones required for that size object so imagine if this was a basketball design I could simply uh, you have it at three inches, I could scale it up to six inches, add stones to it again, and it would plot out uh, the proper number of stones for a six inch design as well. So very, very handy feature. And again, we'll get into that more um, when we actually begin our, our design work. So let's go ahead and choose add stones again here. And we've talked a little bit about the breakstone. You kind of saw how that worked. And basically we can select all. Right now we have four individual paths see that there we have four individual paths right now all those stones are attached to those paths but if I want to manipulate those stones individually I can just select all those uh, objects and when I hit break stones now you can see each and every one of these stones is its own separate object now once we get done with a design one thing that we're going to want to do a lot is the path that those stones were applied to we're not going to want to have that as part of our design if i go into wireframe mode here you can see this better you see those paths right in the middle of these stones right well when we export this to our vinyl cutter to cut out the circles obviously we don't want that path line otherwise our cutter is going to want to cut that as well so what we did is rather than go in there and meticulously delete all of those I can just select that whole kit and caboodle and come over to my selections tab and choose this option select define paths and that will extract those paths which I can then delete if I need to okay that's getting a little ahead of ourselves because we moved over to our selections tab but I just want you to know that as we apply stones to any object the path that we're or the object that we're applying those stones to will automatically be renamed for us so we can later extract all those objects and paths that we applied stones to and get rid of that for, uh, in our design. Now, uh, let's go ahead and delete that. So we see how, how the break stone function works. Now, the uh, we do have another option here, and I don't hardly ever use it because I really don't have a need for it. But over here, there's a function called SimStone. And basically, when that function is checked, if we add stones using SimStone, we'll go ahead and do the same process. It's going to take a little bit longer to process, but notice we actually get a simulated stone. The drawback to using that feature, however, is when we do use that feature, notice that the stones are now individual objects applied to that path, which I don't prefer to, to do. Um, so uh, that's probably why I never use that feature. Um, so it's just it's just a matter of you know how you're used to working, um, and that's just something to keep in mind that the program does. Uh, have that feature but again I don't really use that feature very much now we could add stones just like we did there and we do have a function where once uh, once we're all done let's go ahead and break these stones apart once we're all done with our design I can select a series of stones and uh, then I can come in here and choose the simulate button and when I choose simulate it'll take these filled stones let's zoom in here a little bit It'll take these just have a basic fill color, but when I choose simulate, it'll simulate those stones into an actual rhinestone based on the color that we had selected. Now to get rid of that, I can just select those simulated stones. If I hold down my shift key and click on simulate, then it just goes the other way. Okay, so now it just took away the simulation and just left us with the standard fill color. So there's just a couple of different options of working there um, in that uh, simulate or shift simulate, depending on um, the option that we want to do. Now, in this case, we actually have stones that are applied to a line. So now when we choose simulate, it, it says, hey, there's a blend group present. Do we want to separate it? We'll say yes. There's a group uh, present. Do we want to ungroup it? Yes. And then it'll go ahead and apply the simulation to that line of stones but when it does so each of those stones are now separated from its path so that uh, may or may not be desirable let's go ahead and delete that again
Now, the next thing we should talk about is the resize, replace, rename, and, and fill. Those are options that we haven't covered yet. So let's go ahead and add stones. The stones that we added right now are 2.3 millimeter, which is the size that I would typically use for a 6 SS stone. But let's change that to like 3.3. So I have everything selected. Now, really, the proper way to do it would probably be just to click Add Stones again. And that would change the size of the stones. But now we could switch back to 2.3. And if I hit Resize, Replace... Again, it tells us that the blend contour shape is present. So do we want to break it? Yes or no. So we'll say yes, we're going to break it. There's a group present. Okay. And it would go ahead and change the size of the stones. But once again, all the stones have now been separated from that line. So let's veer off a little bit and show you an, an, an application on the resize replace. Let's say, for example, I, I have this flame, this flame going on back here, right? And what I want to do is I want to use that flame, but I want it to be all six SS stones. And right now, it, uh, if we click on this, you can see the 0.126, which means there are 3.2 uh, millimeter stones. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to very carefully come in here and delete our soccer ball. We actually have a, a, a nice little function in Easy Stone to quickly uh, extract certain colors of stones, but that's on our Selections tab. So what I can do here is I can just change the size of, of my stone. So we'll go ahead and do that. When I hit Resize Replace, all these 10 SS stones have now been changed over to 6 SS. But you notice what's happened here. We have much, let me undo that just so we can see that. So we're going to put that back. But what happens here is these stones, the spacing between the stones, because all these circles got smaller, um, the, the spacing between the stones got bigger. And so now you can see again how all these stones are fairly close together. But when we select them and choose to resize, replace, now there's a bigger spacing between them. So what we can do is we can just scale this design. And when we hit the resize, replace, see the stones get a little bit tighter. We can scale the design a little bit more and hit the resize, replace until we get the stones nice and tight the way we want them. And we could, you know, keep scaling up or down to either increase or decrease the spacing between the stones. So we're not selecting a different number of stones. We're just defining the spacing between stones. And you'll see that a lot um, when you, especially if you buy a, a design, um, you may want to increase or decrease the spacing a little bit um, more to your liking. So that's what the resize replace does, uh, which is very nice. So let's go ahead and delete that. And we'll delete that and let's take a look at the rename and fill so again we're going to add some stones and the way the rename and fill works um, is kind of just like before where right now we have a smoke topaz 2.3 what i can do here is i can uh, just choose a different color and if i hit rename and fill it'll just automatically change my fill color and notice that when it does that that it does not break the stones from the path. It just simply changes the color um, very, very easily. Now, it doesn't change the size of the stone, but it will very easily change the color. And likewise, if uh, we come in here, and we'll break the stones. So I'll just go ahead and extract these stones over here. If we had a situation where I wanted to change, maybe I bought a design and I want to change the color of the stone, all I can do is select those stones and when we choose, uh, let's go with, uh, well, let's go with fuchsia, and I choose the rename and fill, and it changes those stones are now all fuchsia stones instead. So when I select them, you can see they all say they're fuchsia stones. But if we go back to emerald green, and I select those stones, now you can see that they say that they're all emerald green stones. So very easy to switch um, back and forth um, using that rename and fill to change the color of the stone. So I think that's pretty well it, understanding the very basics of the stone tab, all the various different options. Um, there is one other function here in Rename and Fill that we didn't talk about, and that is when the stones are loose like this. 
Okay, what we can do is we can actually select stones. We can change the stone size. So in this case, we'll do 3.3 millimeter. And then we'll also change the stone color. And when I hold down my shift key and click on rename and fill, it changes the color of the stone and it also will resize the stones um, to whatever size we have specified here in the library. So just to kind of recap a little bit about the various shortcuts, because they are important to know, we know that if we hold shift add stones, right? So we'll select two stones. When we do the shift add stones, it plots the stones a straight line of stones between the two objects that we had selected. If we hold down the Alt key when we choose Add Stones, then it'll plot nice sharp corners for us at our sharp, cor our sharp corners. If we hold down uh, Clear Stones, it will remove stones that are plotted along a path. And if we hold down Shift Clear Stones, then it only eliminates stones that are loose, not stones that are attached to a path. And then, of course, if we hold the simulate down, we can select a group of stones and choose simulate. And that will change those stones to a real looking stone. And then to go back to only a filled object, we hold shift simulate. And that will take all those stones back to just their standard fill color. And then, of course, the shift, rename, and fill will rename our stones and change their size if that's an option that we want to have. So that's it for the stone tab. I hope you learned a little something, and I hope I lived up to my promise of it being incredibly boring for you. But thanks for watching.